All right, uh, let me get started here. For those of you who don't remember the lecture going exactly like this, welcome to the encore performance of lecture 20. Um, I still don't have a joke, but because of the technical difficulties we had at the beginning, I had to restart OBS, and when I did, we ended up not being in record mode. So I need to redo this one, and we're going to do that right now, and hopefully do it just a little faster and just a little better. Um, but we will be redoing it regardless. So let's talk a little bit about, about where we stand right now. Um, with some housekeeping, uh, first kind of item of housekeeping that we want to talk about is uh, this concept of it's going to be somewhat homework-like. Uh, the idea is that we are going to give you more time. It will be phrased as a homework, um, but it will count as your final, as your third exam. Um, it will be due on Wednesday, 12-9. You may use late days. Um, you may go to office hours, but we may limit the amount of help we allow the staff to give. We'll know that once we know what the actual assignment is going to look like, uh, and we are still working on that. Uh, also, uh, Homework 7 goes live on Submitting tonight. Um, there is an affirmation I kind of want to show you. Um, so if we come into Submitting and we go into Homework 7, uh, what you will find is that we feel the need. Uh, there's a small number of you who have been kind of abusing the uh, collaboration policy or running afoul of it in some ways. So we want to make sure that we are uh, giving you the guidance you need in order to succeed in this course. So what we've done is we've kind of encoded in the homework seven submission some questions or some some affirmations about the uh, the collaboration policy. Um, please click I agree if you can agree. If you can't agree, if something has gone wrong already, please contact us. Um, if you have to choose, I cannot agree. Um, and you submit that, what you're going to find out is that um, when you get the auto grading results back, we actually deduct some points. Uh, so you can see that we deduct enough to get you down uh, no credit. Um, you know, talk to us. There's a possibility that if you if something went wrong or, or you, you, you ran a follow one of these policies and we know ahead of time, we might be able to take some some uh, steps to get you, you know, points back. But if you don't click, I agree on all of these. Um, no matter what Submitty says, right? I'm still working on a, on one little glitch with Submitty. But no matter what Submitty says, if you don't hit, I agree on all of those um, before you submit your homework, um, you will get a zero on the homework uh, again. If there's an issue, come and talk to us. We'll, we're happy to discuss things and try to figure out a solution uh, ahead of time. We're not so happy doing it after the fact. Um, but, you know, if you do it ahead of time, you'll get your full grade. Um, so please contact if there's an issue, us if there's an issue. There seems to be uh, some issue going around or, or some mistake going around about physics. Um, I looked at the... Uh, Final exam schedule. Let me see if I can actually get that up because we've been having some some technical difficulties today. Let's see. Okay, if you look at the computer science 1100, right, our test is Wednesday from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Um, so that's on Wednesday from 6.30 to 9.30. There seems to be some confusion with physics. Uh, physics has it from their uh, 
1100 course is Thursday from 8 to 11, so that won't affect us. Um, right, we're on Wednesday. And then their Physics 2, the Physics 2 exam is Wednesday from 6.30 to 9.30. I'm sorry. Got that backwards. Um, Physics 1100 is Thursday from 8 to 11. That's a.m., right? And the Physics 2 exam is Wednesday from uh, 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. So if you're in Physics 1... There's no conflict, right? Physics 1 is Thursday morning. Um, it looks like there may be a conflict. Hmm. We'll look into the, It looks like 6.30 to 9.30... And 6.30 to 9.30. So there may be a conflict with physics, too. All right. So we will contact the physics department. We'll try to work that out. We already have a report of it from, from some people. Okay. Let's see what else we have to talk about. I think that may be the bulk of it. All right, let's 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 move on with, uh, we'll start off with uh, some stuff from last class. Let's see, where do I need to get to? There we go. Nope. All right, so let's start off with, uh, actually with lecture 19. We want to go to, oops, the very bottom of the, of the page. We wanted to talk a little bit more about a few things. Um, maybe the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the string function. So if we go to our restaurant, um, we have this string function, and there seems to be some confusion as to what the string function does and where it exists. Um, if you have something like uh, you have an integer, let's say uh, x equals 5, right, and you do x dot string underscore underscore str underscore underscore, sorry, right, what the string function does, it takes the input right? And it converts it to a string form. So if we have uh, L2 is a list, of 10, right? And we do something like uh, import random. And we do random dot shuffle L2, right? We can look at our L2, and we can see that it's a list. But if we want to print L2, uh, or if, if, if we want to uh, convert L2 to a string, right? We talked about the string function before. We can either do string L2. And what that does is that actually calls L2 dot string 
to get a string. And notice that this doesn't uh, actually print. If we put this into something like, um, if we say L, L3 equals L2.string, right? What this does is it returns a string. And that string tells, you know, gives how we want that variable or how we want that, that class to be seen. So, right, it doesn't actually do any printing. And if we want to print L3 or we want to print what our list looks like, we still have to do the print ourselves. But what it does is it converts it into a string format so we can make it uh, something that can be printed. And that's the same thing for the restaurant class. If we run this restaurant class, we're going to define two variables. Um, restaurant 1 and restaurant 2. So we can look at rest one, and like any uh, object, uh, any any complex class, self self defined class, what we get when we look at uh, rest one is we get uh, a pointer into memory where this object is actually stored. So if we want to look at the object and we want something useful, we have to actually define a string function, right? And here is the definition of the string function for the restaurant class. Right? And what that does is it returns an S. You don't see any prints in here. Right? This isn't printing anything. What it's doing instead is it's looking at the data and deciding how we want to present that. So this, um, let's see, uh, R equals string rest1. Right, gives us R that looks like that. Um, we could also do you know R equals rest one dot. Right? And that also gives us exactly the same thing. This just calls this. Okay, this is the definition of an operator. In this case, it's the str operator. So this maps into something that has a specific meaning in the Python language. In this case, it's the string function itself. And then we can just do simply print uh, r, right? When you do a print on something, on an object, like print s1, right? This looks like the string, but the key is, is that print itself internally is doing print string rest one right so it's it's implicitly or it, you know it, it, it converts this restaurant object into a string first and then prints out the string so there's no difference between this and this and print does this for any object that has a string function defined um, if we don't have a string function defined you know then obviously uh, what we get is is the address of it so all right is there anything else I wanted to talk about on that? I think that's probably it. The key, the key here is, is that this is the representation of how we want something printed out when you hit the print function, right? Um, so you remember that that uh, converting a list to a string does not convert all of the elements of the list to strings. What it does instead is it creates something that uh, if you print out the returned string, it just gives you what the list would look like in a way that we can understand. All right, so that's kind of that part of this. Um, let's move on to the next part of, of lecture 19. We want to discuss a little bit what's in and what's not in the restaurant class. Um, and we'll start out by looking at what's not in that restaurant class. Um, so you'll notice that we, we don't do any input or line parsing. Uh, and that's because this restaurant class um, Right now, we're using Yelp data. We're using a, a CSV or pipe-separated data. I don't remember exactly what it is. Let's take a quick look. We have it up here. Um, yeah, it's pipe-separated, right? So this pipe character separates things into fields, and we have a specific ordering to the fields. Um, but that's not really inherent in the restaurant class, right? We could expect we could think of data where um, this was perhaps. 
uh, a comma instead, or maybe where, um, you know, this was JSON file, or maybe some of this data was here and some of it was in a, in a separate a database file so that we had to do a merge operation or a join operation to get at all the data. So this, this whole idea of um, this file seeding the restaurant or being the source of data for the restaurant is an arbitrary decision, and it may be the case that we want to have multiple sources for this data. So because of that, we've decided to make this conceptual separation between the parsing of the data and the actual um, class itself. So you'll see that here, this is where we go through the entirety of the file, returning um, one line of the file at a time. And here is where we take that one line of the file at a time, and we break it up based on the pipe character, and we create our fields, and we put our fields into our restaurant class. And this is the first call that's actually a member of the restaurant class. The parsing, right, the reading the file, and the building of the, of the records is not done in this class at all. And that's conceptually because we want to separate uh, these, uh, these restaurant classes from uh, this restaurant class from the format it's stored in on the file. Now, that's not always the decision you want to make. This is an arbitrary decision based on, on our conception of the restaurant class. You know, it is possible that, that maybe you work for Yelp and you want the restaurant class to be absolutely tied to your file format, uh, in which case putting the parsing actually in the restaurant file would be perfectly acceptable. Or maybe you want um, it to, be, to, to f you want a couple of different formats for some reason. And what you've decided to do is you've decided that the parsing will be part of the restaurant file, and you will provide um, multiple parsing methods within that file itself. Right, you would move, um, you know, maybe both of these into that restaurant class, and maybe you'd add more, you know, things to, to, to parse it if it's a JSON file, or to parse it, you know, based on based on the, on the suffix of the file name. Um, you know, those are also valid uh, decisions, and they depend upon upon you know, what your concept of the class is and where you decide to kind of draw those lines. But drawing the line so that the parsing is done externally is, is really not uh, all that uncommon. And in fact, what you might want to do instead is maybe you'll want to have a parsing class um, that's separate from your restaurant class. So you keep your, your restaurant class clean, but you have a separate parsing class that just implements a variety of different parsers for a variety of different file types. Um, so that's, you know, we could take that and move that into the restaurant class. Of course, we could do other things as well. Um, right? There's a lot of things that we left out of the, uh, the restaurant class. No, I'm sorry, sorry, that we included in the restaurant class. We've decided that the average rating um, was something that was inherent in how the restaurant class would be used. So we... Uh, included this average rating method um, in, inside the restaurant class, we could just as easily have uh, returned back the list and allowed that to be calculated in the main as well, the same thing, way we do with the parsing. But we've decided that somehow this is inherent in well, how we want our restaurant class to function. Um, we also have done some things like we've made a, uh, the uh, location, the latitude and longitude of our restaurant class, we've made that a point 2D. So, um, you know, and we've done it in order of longitude and latitude. Um, we've made the address, right? We've, we've, we currently have the address as just a string, but just like we made this location a class, we could make the address an address class if we wanted. We've decided that that's not important enough for how we're going to use this restaurant class, so we don't currently have that. But it's certainly a decision we could make that would be equally as valid. Um, What else do we have here? Um, you know, we're also using a list of scores. We could just do a class for the scores if we wanted. Um, and maybe in that class, we want to put an average function. Um, so anyway, these are just things that we, that we kind of put in there. Um, you know, 
is in city, you know, we've decided that, that somehow that belongs in the restaurant class. Um, we could have just returned the city name. Um, and again, that would be an arbitrary decision. Um, it, it depends on, on your conception of the, of the class and the semantics and the operations you want to support. Um, okay. What we want to point out here is that these aren't right or wrong decisions. These are just decisions that you need to make. Uh, and you should have some reason for doing it and you should, you should try to be consistent you know so you know if you have an average function in there for the ratings um, and maybe you you're going to put in cleanliness ratings you know cleanliness scores uh, as well from a government agency you know maybe being consistent uh, means that you need an average average cleanliness store cleanse cleanliness score as well uh, so just you know kind of keep that in mind and try to make things uh go through that that type of that mechanism that type of uh, of uh, consistency that type of thinking make sure you think about these instead all right I'm going to uh, flash up my little next